I guess, feeling with it and not any yeah. negatives as well. So, no, that's it. That's very interesting. And then, you know, as it starts seeing, like, changes, too, like, like muscle changes, mm-hmm. you know, I remember one night, like, I was here in, like, a kitchen, right? And I'm just, like, like, I had my phone on. I'm, like, Mom, like, take some pictures of me. Like, just, like, and I hit these, like, like the random ass, like, like just these, like, <laughs> I had like, like, remember, like, remember I, your brother? Remember when your brother came in and flexed that one day when I was over at your house? Remember your little brother? He came yeah. in <laughs> and he pulled yeah. off his robe. He's like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, how old are you, dude? Like, what? <laughs> that was funny. We still joke about that. That was funny. Hey, was really know, funny. I, I, I like, see, I, I knew like what I seen from like Instagram and everything. So I hit this like, like the side chest and like everything. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yep. I was, like, feeling good about I think I could still probably find, like, I could probably find those should pictures. should find those. If you could, that'd be really I cool. Try to. Anyways. But, so I was, like, you know, hitting these pictures. And I'm, like, like, I was, like, liking what I see. I'm, like, and then I, the, the whole bodybuilding thing was just, like, I was kind of, like, what I, what I was doing at the time. And I was still wrestling. Yeah. And I never stopped wrestling throughout all that. But, you know, there was times where I, I took some time off from wrestling. Uh, I took, like a, like, a year off. And, but, but yeah, bodybuilding was kind of like my focus at the time. And then, you know, when I started training on my own kind of and, and learning my own deal, you know, I would say like from when I started training to kind of where I, where I would say probably like the first two years, two and a half years, I, I don't really like remember kind of, how, I kind of know how my training was, but it's just like anything else. Like you learn and you evolve, you know? And so my training started from what I knew. And now it is to where I am now. I started following more people now. Um, and, and I, I can, I can honestly say I've had some guidance from like Dave Rock um, and, and, you know, some other people who have guided me with the weight room. But, you know, one thing I'm proud to say and I can honestly say is that I'm pretty much all self-taught when it comes to lifting and, and nutrition. And like so tri- it, it trial really, and error. Yeah. And so people Especially are training. always for sure. And people are always asking me like, like, how did you learn all this? And it's like, well, listen, I'm not, I, I'm not like forcing myself to like research this stuff. When you're interested in something and you want to know about things, like you're going to go out and, and, and find them. And, you know, yep. so that's kind of how with, with bodybuilding and nutrition. Like, I, I love learning about that stuff. I love learning um, new methods and techniques and training philosophies when it comes to the gym. Um, and I love learning everything about, uh, nutrition because in my eyes I want to I, I love this and I want to do this for as long as I can and so the more I know about longevity nutrition um, what will keep me healthy prehab type things um, how to properly do exercises that will benefit me in the long run like I, I'm all for that and so that's kind of sure. where I am and so that was kind of it man so like when I when I took off like I just I just, I just wanted to learn so I was I was on Instagram all the time and i and i still am like i'm just learning yep. like i follow people but i follow a lot of guys like you know joe bennett um eugene teal like i follow all these guys and i from what i know from instagram comes from guys like that yep. or you know, my in my training comes from guys like that no it's- i think no i think that's great manny i think one thing i wanted to mention about especially with the healthy eating sort of thing and you said you're having not trouble but you're you're trying to find that balance of like I know I need to be eating more, but like, is healthy, like is too healthy. Is there a point where it's too healthy? There's actually a thing called orthorexia, which is a eating disorder. A lot of people don't know about, but it's a lot of people in the fitness industry who deal with it. But the, the actual definition is essentially a, um, the, like one's one's like basically the nature of someone to only feel the the ability to eat healthy foods so like if you would eat anything that's remotely considered unhealthy you would feel like a really powerful negative effect in the same degree someone who had an eating disorder of like 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 literally like anorexia or bulimia they feel the same power to like i need to get rid of this food or not see the weight go go up it's it's crazy so but but at the same time i mean there's 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 spectrums of any sort of um thing you're talking about where it's one or the other but finding that balance is huge and i think that's really cool to see that you were it's not not only cool but it's i think it was needed at the time to see you find fitness and really put that into something where it's like oh i can actually build myself up 
and it's not going to be in a way where I'm like really unhappy with the way I look because of it, because it's muscle mass. It's going to benefit me, boost my metabolism. And us as smaller guys, we're like, hey, might have, like you said, screw being small, right? You're like, I might as well do something to help the cause, you know? And then you probably felt, I, I, I mean, I'll let you do the talking with this one, but like you probably felt and noticed a difference with wrestling where you're like stronger, you felt more energy when you were wrestling. Like, in, and even if your weight class was up a little bit, you felt much better at that sort of point, which is where I wish I, if you didn't know, the people on this channel probably don't know, Manny knows, but I wrestled for my eighth, my eighth grade year, my freshman year. And I cut weight like an idiot. Like it was horrible, but I didn't know. Nobody taught me and I didn't know where to research. So I was cutting water weight, manipulating water weight like 10 pounds and then wondering why I was feeling like crap on the mat. But if I knew now, like, hey, how do I manipulate my macronutrients? How can I make sure that maybe I'm going to keep my protein a little bit higher, but I do need to cut calories or maybe I shouldn't cut at all and maybe I should just wrestle at the weight that my body feels the natural yeah. most most optimal performance at. So, um, no, I think that's, that's very interesting, man. And, and I think that was awesome. That was a very great insight. And I appreciate you opening up like that because I know that was probably, if not the toughest point in your life, like you said, oh. just going through such a difficult period, honestly, for, for you and not only mentally, but physically too, especially with the, with the demanding sport of wrestling and, and, and now with, with, with training and everything like that, man. But, um, do you have anything else you want to add to that, man? I think that's, that was, that was perfect, and I can I can chop this up, so don't worry about the time. We keep keep going if yeah. you have any other thoughts, man. And, um, the one thing I, I was just going to clear out is, you, you yeah. know, you brought up ortho orthorexia then, but my <laughs> eating disorder was an – I was anorexic. I wasn't really – I wouldn't really say I was bulimic. I mean, I think there was a point where I, where I was a little bit, but mainly anorexia was my, my eating disorder. And, you know, the thing is now is – that that time in my life was about a year to a year and a half, I'd, I'd say. But it, it felt like it was so long, dude. Like yep. that time, because it's every day is every day is just one at a time. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's just a struggle to uh, you know to keep you know keep progressing and keep getting better. And so it was just like it felt so long now. And now it's like now I'm 18, so now I feel you know comfortable opening up about that in you know uh talking to other people about that you know i see you know especially in the fitness community I, I i quickly learned that i'm definitely not the first person that's ever went through that you know I, i've seen a lot of girls in particular um that have you know experienced the same things and, and guys too you know it, it's it, it's nothing to be ashamed of and i'm at that point where it's like absolutely nothing to be ashamed of and actually um my school counselor i, I had a conversation with her the other day and we and we were talking about this actually and that's actually like the first time I opened up about my full story and kind of just laid out my full story with anybody that wasn't close to me ever. Okay. That was just like last week, literally oh, last wow. week. Yeah. And well, so thanks. it was well, like- that, that, Yeah, that's this is huge then, dude, for sure. This is big. And so like, for me, it was like, that was like, that, that was like an accomplishment, dude. You know, just being able to comfortably tell somebody else that. And so it was like, you know, now it's like, it, it, it's, it's nice to open up to people and, and kind of just, and she, well, what I was saying. Is All right, guys, sorry for the interruption, but for some reason, the audio like kicks out here at this point in the podcast, but what I should be able to do is jump you guys forward and just kind of fill you in on what I asked him and then jump into Manny's answer. So what I asked Manny right here is what his opinion is on people who have had eating disorders, no matter what kind they are competing then in some sort of physique bodybuilding or any sort of that cosmetic style sport where dieting is obviously a huge factor in their success and how he would go about answering that if somebody had asked him like how do you think that that's okay after you've had an eating disorder what was your opinion there and I told him that I was playing devil's advocate because I totally understand where you're coming from when you're doing that after you've recovered from from something like an eating disorder, but I wanted to hear his take. So let's jump you guys forward, get back to the podcast. Hey, this is my situation. This is where I'm at. Would you be, would you think it's a good idea for me to do a bodybuilding show? I'd say absolutely not. Like yep. you got to, like you got to take care of that first. You got to get everything squared away with your mental health first and you got to be comfortable for, for an extended period of time before you even even dabble into restricting calories or anything like that, because I, I can, you know, I, I can truthfully say to when I did that bodybuilding show, I was not like really restricting calories like mm -hmm. at all. Like I, I was just so lean from wrestling 
and and, and the ex benister from since lifting, I'm sure too, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I remember exactly. the, I remember the week like the week prior before my show, dude. I was eating so many carbs, dude. So many carbs. I kid you not. Like it was just like it was almost like looking at now. Like I don't even know how I stomach all of it. It was it was a lot of like like simple stuff like puffed rice because I can, so I That's can good eat. though. And it's also good for digestion. It's not gonna have trouble with you're, you're gonna absorb it too. The the your your uh your muscle was just eating all that glycogen up, dude. You didn't have any sort of you don't have any sort of like um like a lot of times if you eat like a lot of like sodium or especially earlier yeah. in the week as you're loading up, you could spill over a lot of time. Obviously sodium you, when you show day, I'm getting into it on a tangent, but show day obviously yeah. sodium is important to obviously help you look vascular and that sort of thing. But when you're Wednesday on before a Saturday show and you're eating all this sodium and then you're three days of sodium loading along with carbs yeah. like oh shit i look really fat <laughs> or spilled as everyone would say or watery watery is like the term i was listening to your podcast watery is the term people use when it's like things did not go well you know it's like that can mean so many terms like he looked watery <laughs> he just didn't diet enough <laughs> oh, no, no, two to three weeks of dieting left i don't think there's any water oh, but it's so funny anyway sorry i was so much like the the week prior to the show and then like the the night I came and I met you that first night and we hit Golds and Waukesha the legendary <laughs> night dude where Ooh. yeah the legendary night I that night after the workout I think I remember telling you I'm like yeah so I'm just gonna cut water like right now and I didn't I didn't know what I was like shit I don't I didn't really even know so I was just like after the workout I think I'll just cut water then I I pulled that like on a on like a whim you know Which I didn't which honestly wasn't bad because if you would have said that, like maybe like a, like some people are like I'm cutting water two days out, it's like whoa, like you're fucking crazy. But like uh, the night before, I don't think it was bad because if I was the like normal prep, like if you would ask me like, hey, what's a peak week look like? I would say you're not gonna be like cutting water, but like the morning of, you don't want to be like guzzling water either. Like get a gallon in before you, they just want to sip it, like as you as you honestly want to. But like, uh, dude, most people, yeah, will load water if anything, or just keep it the same. But loading's usually a normal practice. But yeah, I mean, dude, I didn't even know any th at that point either. That's where I was like, I was clueless. I'm like, I can diet someone. I don't know how to peak someone, you know? Like, I, I yeah. couldn't even. All I knew was like, Manny, just don't change. I was like, look exactly how you are. I was like, keep doing what you're doing. Like, you look peeled, dude. Like, he, dude, I remember that for everyone else listening, they uh, they don't know, but he came in and he had a hoodie on. Well, if you go watch the video, you'll see he had a hoodie on for the whole workout. So I didn't really get to see anything, but he had shorts on. And if you ever look at someone, most of the people that you see, if you have like diced calves, and when I say diced calves, like go look at the video. This kid had some like ridiculously shredded calves, and I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "If that's any sign of what the rest of his body looks like, I was like, this kid is peeled." But um, but no, I think uh, not to interrupt you, but in, in terms of the eating disorder thing, with with relation to to prepping or just doing any sort of show or even fitness in general, I think there's there's something to be said about like you were mentioning, obviously your mindset overall, whether it was an eating disorder, whether it's stress in your life, whether you broke up with your girlfriend, you lost a parent, your dog died, literally anything, stress is stress. But like you were mentioning, you need to be in that good mindset because I know multiple people. I know probably like three or four stories of people that I've actually spoken with um, who are recovered eating disorder um, uh, and they also have competed. So it, it's interesting because it, obviously it's not in like six months, you know what I mean, or a month later, you know, it's, it takes time. But I think also for them, and I, I think you could probably attest to this as well, it probably is accomplishing because you feel like, hey, I did take control and I, and maybe I restricted myself if you want to um, look at it that way, but you are accomplishing the, the, the task of saying, Hey, I did this, but I'm also not like, this isn't my life. And I think there's probably a lot of people who do shows that probably shouldn't. And they maybe like blatantly lie and they're like, yeah, it was great. But I think if you genuinely do it and you come out of it thinking, no, that was good. I feel good. Like I want to do that again. Maybe not right now or every single week of my life or every yeah. year even, but I think you can really, like I said, it can be an accomplishing thing because you're like, no, I took control of this thing and I made, I, I built myself up. And that's the big thing where I think you and a lot of people, other people se separate themselves. You don't want to look like you're, you're skinny and depleted up on stage. You want to look good. Yeah. And that's where, that's the satisfaction, I think. So, like I said, I was already playing devil's advocate because I have, I would go off on someone if they ever said that. Um, or I would yeah. at least explain it because I, I can see where they'd be coming from. But like you were saying, it's, it's definitely much different. Um, you're not in the same mindset at all. That's the goal anyways, hopefully. So, yeah. yeah.
because it, it, and one thing too is like I think was if somebody were to try to jump into a body if, if they're recovering from an eating disorder and they try to jump into a bodybuilding show too soon, I you're definitely going to be at more risk of slipping back into that eating disorder. You might yep. be about 95% like recovered and then you go to do a bodybuilding show and then you start slipping down a little bit. Like I I, I, I wasn't at that point. You know, I, I was definitely 100% recovered. And that's where I feel like you have to, um, you have to, you have to know inside that, that you are recovered before you even start to go into something like that. Exactly. No, I totally agree, man. But, um, this is about 37 minutes in right now, man. So I think this is honestly great. I think we covered a lot. You kind of answered the questions I was already going to go into as far as training and nutrition, how you got into that. And like you're saying, you pretty much you developed it, you learned trial and error, I think is the big thing. And that's, it's, it's not the answer people like to hear because they're like, Oh, what's the one thing you read that changed everything. It's like, there isn't anything because you like myself, I had a passion for something and I learned because of that, because I enjoyed seeing the results in myself. And that was awesome. That was like, there's nothing greater in, in life, in my opinion, than doing something you enjoy and then learning and being able to really achieve more through that because you learned. So I think, um, yeah, and experience is the big thing there. Life itself, fitness, you got to be able to try it, see if it works. Cause sometimes there's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there. And quite frankly, it might work for you and might not work for someone else. So you really have to try things out like that. But I think, um, this is a lot of great content, like I said, Manny. And I think this is something that not only I learned a lot from about you, but, uh, but, but a lot of people can really take a lot away from it and be inspired by, it. but go ahead. It looks like you got something to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, one of my, one of my last, one of the last things that I say, oh, but one, fine, of my, one of my favorite quotes that, uh, that my dad has always said is if there's a will, there's a way. And so if you're, if you're passionate about something and, and you, you know, if you, and you have a goal of, of getting something done, if there's a will, there's a way to get it done. And so that's kind of how my mindset was with fitness. You know, I'm so driven by it. That it's just like, I, I just, I, I want to know, you know, I want, I, you know, the more I know, like it, it, it's just how it is. And so exactly. Exactly. Well, and, and honestly, at this point in time in, in, in just our world, we have the most scientifically backed literature out there on different topics. There's actually like research being done, research being conducted. There's a market for it, which hasn't been the case a lot of times where it's like, if there's research money on anything regarding like anything with the human body, it was like how to treat cancer, how to get rid of polio, how to get rid of the things that really honestly in the end of the game um, really matter the most. But whether we want to face it or not, yeah. obesity is a huge problem at this point oh, in our life and obviously i'm talking about per sports performance literature and things like that but nonetheless all those things kind of combined into one in my opinion but manny i want to say thank you really it was really an honor to, to, to hear all that because like i said i appreciate you sharing that with everyone and it's cool because it sounds like you just you're, you're getting like you're trying to, yeah, yeah exactly like you That's said it was an accomplishing thing so um mm -hmm. i like it man but um i'm, I'm yeah. really grateful like i said I'm glad we got the chat, man. It was a good conversation and we will definitely be hearing more from you. Like I said, this is good though. I, I think people are going to love this, man. So, um, sure. yeah, hey, throw, go ahead. Throw loose. Let's get a, let's get a uh, uh, snapshot here. I'll put it on after that. Instagram. Or you got it. Perfect. All right, there you go. Hold on. All right, I think that's it, dude. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely we'll cut it off here. All the people that saw that screenshot, I'm gonna leave this in here so people are like, what are they doing? And they'll go on Instagram and see it. Oh, there we yeah. go. Yep, perfect. All right, man. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it, especially if you're still watching. Um, and yeah, be back soon. First ever Ankle Athletics podcast, guys. For for Manny, myself. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, thanks, guys. Peace out. We'll see you later.